everybody, we are covering five things I wish I'd known before leveling in Diablo 4 2.0. There has been so many changes. The game is going to be completely different. I consider it almost like Diablo 5. The changes are so huge. Now, I have been playing a Hydra Sorceress, and this has been a blast for leveling. I highly recommend it. Probably one of my most enjoyable leveling experiences. And that's not just because of the Hydras, but because of some of the changes. And so I want to jump in there and talk about the things that kind of struck me or things that were exciting just to give you guys some insights and even possibly some tips to level faster in next season. So let's go ahead and go inside. I want to just talk about the very first thing was as I started leveling, I realized that as the process has been so far, there's been a major focus of just kind of getting ready for the capstone. I'm not really that worried in early game. I'm not really worried about my gear. I'm not really worried about anything else other than getting leveling up so I can get strong enough, get some skill points and then get through that because I know in the in this next area, I'm just going to replace everything anyway. So spending a lot of time on it didn't make a lot of sense, but it was weird without them. You know, that's the thing that kind of struck me. I got to like level 25, 30, and I didn't realize how much of these are just an iconic marker for the leveling And it. At first, I was worried that, hey, this would feel wrong. But as I persisted, as I continued, as I got to the level 35 and 40 and 50, when I would have probably gone through the cap, the second capstone, it was actually very pleasant not to have to do that because I was basically ramping up everything just to move to the next area. And the area would immediately make you drop all of your gear and replace it. So what they have set up is they have these eight areas now. I don't know if they're going to extend them or what they're going to do, but we have normal hard. These are kind of like world tier one and two when you're making a decision on leveling. As you level up a little bit, it will open up this ability to do expert. There is a decent jump, especially in an early game, if you don't have your build and your pieces online between these two. This isn't even going to open up until level 50. So you have basically these three areas and the gear doesn't change between them. The item level stays close to your level. There's some advantage, like the drop rates might increase for legendaries or things like that. More gold, more experience. Those things are going to happen. Actually, it says that it's actually just experience. It's not even talking about gear drop jump until torment. So we're really looking at an experience jump if you can take the higher difficulty. But you're going to spend 50 levels and you get to basically make them mean something. So really, it's kind of scaling where it makes sense, but you don't have to. And then eventually get to 50 and then start getting ready to do that last 10 levels to to finish out at 60 and then start in on your torments. All the torments do require level 60, but this felt so good because I am not switching between realms and making everything I did previously not matter anymore. So then that brings me to the next thing. When I was looking at gearing, it felt so much better because even here, I'm in torment three. I just got here. Even here, if you look, I have like a few ancestrals. And so what this has done, not only in the early game, does your build start to matter, but you're going to be there for 50 levels and the gear you get other than increasing item levels is gear that matters. And since you're not going anywhere and just dropping it all at once, it makes sense to level it up. It makes sense to play with tempers it, and it is moving you know, fast enough in the early game, but it starts to slow down around 35 and 40. So you are actually starting to build a serious build and then. When you cross over into Torment, you aren't immediately replacing it with all Ancestrals. They're dropping Ancestrals. I was a little disturbed. I was like, why are they not dropping? I thought the PTR was just like limiting what we could get. But as I started playing through it, it started making a lot more sense. My build matters throughout the game. It matters throughout early game. It matters to take a little extra time and make sure that I have the pieces I want or aspects I want to play with. And it gets tighter and tighter as I go. It feels like constant progression. Then when I get Ancestrals, it's a big deal. When I add them to it, it makes a big impact on the game. I thought that I was going to like it a little bit more that we didn't have to jump in and do sacreds, but I love it that I do not. I didn't. Sacreds was such a waste of time. It was just like this mini purgatory for actually getting your build online. And so this to me made a lot more sense. And in early game, you have more the ability to explore more, to experiment, to play with builds that are really just the fantasy you imagine rather than being forced to metas all the time. You know, because it's going to take a while to get to that meta. So you want to play something that's enjoyable and fun. And I absolutely love this about it. Now, here is probably one of the biggest shockers across the board. I have made numerous videos and I've talked about how little I like Nightmare Dungeons. I right now don't mind them. They aren't bad. And I, I like it's so dumb because they didn't change much. They changed one major thing. I mean, they 
It's a big change, but they changed one thing about them and suddenly they didn't change the layouts. They didn't change the monster density. They didn't change the boss setup. They didn't change the event. Well, they changed the events a little bit. Uh, the mapping is a little bit better. I, I will say that the mapping is tighter where it should be. Things are closer together. Than it should be. Um, but for the most part, these are the same maps we've been running that I've just not enjoyed. I've been so tired of running. And what they've done is they've just taken the glyph leveling out of Nightmare Dungeons. Nightmare Dungeons will now be, at, after you get to level 60, will start dropping materials for masterworking, not glyph experience. So, and that drops everywhere. So as you do the events, as you do the different things around, as you kill extra elites, as you take on the shrines, it's not just for leveling anymore. Uh, it is for getting the mats for masterworking. You're not just trying to get through to get that glyph level. It still feels a little faster in the like second half, let's say, let's say level 30 to level 50. It feels like a good decision to start mixing in Nightmare Dungeons, but I also didn't feel pressured to. And this change made Nightmare Dungeons so much more enjoyable for me. Where did they move the glyph leveling? They moved it to the pit. The pit's design was to run as fast as possible, not picking things up, not doing anything. Just how do you get a build that can blitz through a ton of monsters and mobs and take a boss down at the end? And there is where you're going to get experience. And that feels so much better that they've moved it over there. So additionally, the something they, they took out that probably makes the Nightmare Dungeons even more enjoyable is these keys are not tied to a level. It's really, it's those stages. As we go through these, this sets the difficulty and this sets what the reward is. There isn't a, I can go do this one event because I can actually push the levels of the monsters and get more reward for it. The monsters in that area are that level outside the pit. The pit is still designed to come over here and pick where, whatever you're doing and keep pushing. This is what opens the torment levels. So as I'm coming through, you can kind of even measures like what area that would be about. And they do open up to level 20 because you should be level 60 and you should be able to do penitent at that point. But the first ones up till penitent, once penitent is open, that's at level 50. The rest of these are open all through clearing certain levels of the pit. So this is the only place where you'll change difficulty and keep pushing. Everything else is going to normalize for that area. So as soon as you're in that area, all the activities are viable. And so this is just a really great ad. So that all being said, I just want to show you guys more of what's behind the scenes. The nightmare dungeons are now just tied to this. These keys, whatever map they go to, I don't know what they're going to do with this missing something else. They're taking, they've taken all the negative of the debuffs off of these. And so they just run. If you, I move to torment one, I don't have to reset my entire set of keys because it's tied to the, whatever area I'm actually in. That makes it a lot cleaner for managing and you just don't have a ton. If you also noticed while we were there, this is in its own bag. <laughs> it is no longer shoved into our gems or into our potions. There's still a lot going on with the potions in the mat. That still adds up pretty quick. But the dungeon keys are in their own thing. And I'm guessing forward keys are going to be here too. So this is a really great ad. We're getting more choices to just take things and put them in places where they actually should be. Why is everything jammed into our potions tab anyway? Why, is, why isn't mats actually just being treated as materials, you know, like, why isn't it held here? Like our obosite <laughs> and all the other stuff that we like collect over time. Why can't our boss mats actually be there too? So this would be great. I hope they kind of move this direction, but this felt amazing. It made the nightmare dungeons way more playable. So I know that was more than just nightmare dungeons, but I'm excited to share what's in here. I've had a blast and that's one of my favorite things to do is actually share with you guys what is really cool coming down the pipeline and get you guys ready and excited because I think that makes the game more enjoyable to, to be looking forward to something. And next season is going to definitely deliver some crazy new changes. And I can't wait to get into it, including what's next. And that is the Paragon board. Now I heard there's some crazy changes coming to it and I wasn't really sure how I felt about them, but when I got in, it felt pretty awesome. So the first thing they did, and I hope they do keep this. I know some people were grumbling about it, but I really do like it. They limit the number of boards to five. So that also limits the number of glyphs that you can total glyphs you can use to five as well. And I think that's a really solid thing. And they, because they've opened up the boards, they've given way more nodes. And now you have more freedom to kind of build the way you want, because you're not going to try to get on and just get another glyph or get to another legendary node. You are going to try to maximize what you can from getting those. Yeah. Getting those legendaries and yeah, getting those, uh, the socket so you can get the glyphs in there, but you are also going to be able to take all the little side paths that you want, or at least try to maximize as best you can, but you have more choices here to pick these kind of pick these other clusters that have more impact and can have 
a direct effect on how your build's feeling right now. And it's really nice as these aren't as critical as like leveling up a glyph and, and finding a legendary node that could dramatically change how the game plays. Taking them off if they're not needed any longer and switching to something else. Because you're limited and you're not trying to stretch out to get to another legendary or glyph, you are able to make, take advantage of those things and really modify more for what's going on in your build right now. Okay, so that takes me, there is one thing, and I just want to double down on this because I thought I was going to hate this when it started happening. I got to torment level. It's, it didn't drop in sessions. I thought the game was broken. The, what they did made sense as I started continually pushing. As I kept going through the, the torment levels, I still didn't get ancestral. But when I did, man, that was insane. I could immediately make it a better item, even if the fixes weren't as good as the thing I had, because I get the double tempers, because I get a much higher roll on the fixes that are on it. And it gave me a lot of options. These aren't even like necessarily perfect, but when I got it, I wanted to use it right away. That is a rare feeling outside of mythics in the current game. It hasn't been like, OK, cool. Well, maybe I can take the aspect off of this and put it on a real piece. You know, like it, it always felt like I had to do something immediately to make it useful other than like tempering. Tempering, I, I just see it as like that's what those are the fixes that should be on that. So as we add those, but it was great. I, I got the ring and I added to it. And as I continue to progress through the torment levels, it's just adding to the diff, the, the chances that I'm going to drop better and better gear. I'm in Torment 3, and I've shown you, I don't have, this is an Ancestral, this is an Ancestral. There is no Sacred, so it's from base gear that you leveled up through and kept upgrading as you went, and this big jump when you get one of these. They all roll with greater fixes. It is pretty freaking awesome, but it feels good, you know? And so now it feels like I'm not abandoning my build to rebuild it all over again because I have to replace every single piece anyway, and the faster I do that, the more power I'm going to get. Now I'm still getting that feeling of progression that what I do matters. I'm not just trying to blast two to get to the bossing so that I can then drop that perfect mythic and then everything else comes together. I am actually enjoying feeling out my build, playing it, making it feel stronger. And this adds to that constant journey in a way I did not expect. So as I promised, I want to show you guys the Hydra build. I'm taking it. I just got into this torment level, so this is not going to go as cleanly. But just imagine that the things that stick around and don't die immediately did die because that's what's going to happen through most of this game from the beginning to the end. And then I'll show you guys some of the key pieces that I think are most important for it. It is not by any stretch of imagination a complete build. I do not think it's going to be like the top tormented for meta by any stretch, but it is so much fun. It leveling. It may be one of the top. So as you see, I kind of lay them behind me. I'm not worried about resources. That's not an issue. I just kind of lay my hydras behind me as I go and they just kill everything. This I'm just constantly getting experience for walking on early game. I'm like leveling up like insane. I don't even as long as I spread them out and like try to get them to clear different mobs. You know, it's just really easy. So they're the mobs are holding on at this level, but they normally wouldn't be in early game. Even like the previous torment, it was like they were getting deleted really fast. So, but a great play style for leveling. You are not in the thick of things. You get to keep their mobility and the leveling just goes like crazy. The boss killing is awesome. Loading like all three, like right on top of something and letting it do its thing is just a really great feel. Two things, early game, the two things that matter most, and I'll give you one additional, maybe three, th three things that matter most, but in order of what matters is first getting a two-handed weapon and then getting a temper on it. Right now I have single-handed weapons. So that temporary, the second one, casted hydras have additional heads. This is the difference. On a staff, this is two to, it's two to four additional heads. So I rolled like right away, like eight to 10, I got my first yellow that I could temper on. And I threw this on there and got four hydra heads, doubling the size of the hydra. So it's this big ring, as you saw, insane. That was the first thing that made a huge difference. And most, like I think up to 2025, 20, that was all that I needed to do to make this build just feel incredible. Then I started getting some aspects. Serpentine chain, this thing, or serpentine is the aspect, but you have an additional Hydra. So now I have the two of the heads, 16, and another one that's 24 heads, just eliminating everything and giving me that chain. So as I go through and I'm walking and I'm just kind of planning them, I have this long chain of it, just like they're still, all three batches are killing. And then if I just plant all three around the boss, they're all shooting in on the boss. It's, it's just a crazy boss killing machine as well as a mob clear. The burn damage that it adds and leaning into that is just incredible. So the serpentine. And then the last thing was just the tempers that I could do pretty early. It's if you anywhere I could, I got the hydra damage increase. So this one has the additional hydra damage. 
So doing that just made it really come online. And I, it was so good that I think even if it wasn't the ancestral role of these tempers, which they just unlocked for the, I, I think they unlocked for the PTR, but maybe they're going to open that as that's just I mean, how the standard is from now on, but I'm not sure. But it, even if it's a lower form of that and you get like an extra head for, you know, or two for having a double handed weapon, it's still going to make a big difference. And that damage, even that damage is 80, it would make a huge difference. It is a real, real blast to play. Now, the other thing that I added is that I'm playing with is what enchantments to use. I early on was doing boss killing. I noticed that just adding different sources of burn damage plus extra damage when things were burning and having things increase in damage when I had different types of burning applied or burning from different abilities really added up to a lot of damage. I am now kind of in between as I'm trying to push higher and higher. I'd like to see better clears of the mobs of what I just saw and want to go to maybe a critical. But this one in early game matters a lot. That fireball enchantment, it just explodes. So anything that dies, you explode everything around it even better for mob clearing. So this is really the setup. Those pieces is what made the early game. Then you just kind of look through the aspects. Does anything add more to burning damage? Does anything add more to if it's immobilized? Because you can actually force it in the skill tree to have fire skills now immobilize. So it's just a great, great add on. If you go to Talrosh's ring eventually, like I got this around probably level 35, 40, I'd say. Talrosh, I don't know if that's how often it drops or I'm totally lucky at that point, but I did get this pretty early and it was nice. I This isn't the level I got of it. This is a, an upgrade sense, but I did get a, a lower version. The item power wasn't 750. Those those tend to drop when you finally get to like level 60. That's where you start seeing the 750s consistently drop. So, but replacing that out, now I'm looking for different elemental types of damage. Just really a great feel, really great clears. So I'll, I'll float over. I'll show you the skill tree. The Paragon board is not done by any stretch. Feel free to play with that however you want. But this is where I'm at right now. Um, let's go from the top. Let's go full screen so you guys can see it. I'll scan through. As I get this perfected, I may come back and add to the description a what I think is a final build. I do want to check if it really does play well in endgame. If not, I'll, I'll still go and what I'll do is create at least a version that has no unique requirements. And so that you guys can you guys can mess with that, even if you're doing truly just leveling with it. And then maybe switching to something more powerful in the end game. But yeah, these are the stacks. Uh, this is kind of what I've run. So obviously, we're heavily focusing on the fire nodes. I'm crossing or I did play with familiars a little bit because it can rotate through the elements. But I, I'm trying to actually switch that out and see if I can get the different elements applied in a, you know, a quicker way. I've been switching out with the ice blades at times. You know, I'm just trying to see what will really blow it up. And the Paragon board is not even, I don't even have the glyphs that I want for that yet. So, but this build, honestly, without glyphs, with just a little bit of knowledge in the skill tree is going to make a huge difference to how great your leveling feels. It just feels great to just walk through and like just a powerful sword is just slamming things behind you that just wipe everything killing bosses with that bleed damage. Oh, I did want to show you. That is one thing I did want to show. So as you come down on the board, if you, on the skill trees, right here is uh, this immobilization that adds extra uh, vulnerability to monsters and can trigger other skills and extra damage. So when you're, when you're paying attention to things that add burning or aspects that affect like when something's burning or when something's immobilized or when something is vulnerable, then you can start, look, this starts to apply it. We can do that in many different ways, but this is the one I mentioned earlier. Now, there is just so much, and I, I want to share as much as I possibly can. I'm actually really excited. This is, uh, since I, as long as I remember, I'm like a kid that wanted to play, get really good, and then share it with all his friends, and that's what I feel like I'm doing. If you guys are still playing Diablo 4, make sure you catch the, my absolute favorite OP endgame tips to help you get the most out of your endgame.